Let's continue configuring Vim inside JetBrains IDE. So if I'm going to yank some word by using key combination YIW, then this text goes to Vim's buffer and we can paste it from there by pressing P in normal mode. But the thing is that if I'm going to delete some word after that by using DIW key combination, everything that was in the buffer before that will be erased and replaced with just deleted text. So that means that if we'll try to paste the text from the buffer by pressing P, we are going to get deleted text, but not that one that we have yanked before the deletion. But I prefer to redefine this behavior so that anytime we're going to delete some content, it is not going to override that content that is already in the buffer. So I'm going to define the following mapping. There is a special kind of register in Vim called black hole. And if we're going to activate this register before we try to delete something, that content that we are going to delete is not going to overwrite the buffer. By default, this black hole register is activated by pressing double quotes and underscore. But I prefer to use backslash instead to activate black hole register. So now if we'll try to do the same, firstly, let's try to yank some text. And then if I'll try to delete something by firstly activating black hole register by pressing backslash and then key combination to delete the word DIW. In this case, that word that we have just deleted will not end up in the buffer. So if we'll try to paste the content in the buffer, we're gonna get previously yanked text, but not the deleted word. So the content that we have yanked will remain in the buffer, and that's the behavior that I prefer. So let's move on. For example, let's try to yank some word, and then if we'll select another word, or any other content that doesn't necessarily have to be the word, and then if we'll press P to paste, then that content that was selected will be overridden. But at the same time, it is going to end up in the Vim buffer, so it will override anything that was there before. And then by trying to paste the content from the buffer by using P key, it is going to paste that content that we have just replaced. So in such cases, when we are replacing something, I prefer to keep the buffer stay the same as it was before the replacement. So let's define the following mapping. I'm going to add some helpful comment so we will not forget what this mapping will be responsible for. And here I'm basically assigning the functionality of capital letter P to lowercase p. So what this will do is that anytime we're going to try to replace some content by pressing P with the content that is currently in the clipboard, we are not going to override the clipboard. So I'm going to source configuration file once again because we have made changes and now let's try to do this again. I'm going to firstly yank this word and then let's select another word and press P to replace selected text with whatever is currently in the clipboard. As you can see, it worked, but at the same time, if we'll try to paste the content that is currently in the clipboard, we're going to get not the replaced text, but the text that was in the clipboard before the replacement. Next one, I'm going to sync two clipboards together because in Vim there is a separate clipboard and that means if we'll try to copy some text by pressing default keyboard shortcuts to copy command C on Mac OS or Ctrl C on Windows, the copied text will end up in the default clipboard of operating system. And that means if I'll try to paste the content from the clipboard by pressing P, we'll get different content, not that one that we have copied into clipboard of operating system. And also if I'll try to yank the content inside Vim's clipboard, and then let's try to paste it inside another app by pressing Command V, we'll get a different content, not the one that we have just copied by using Vim keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to add another setting in here that will allow us to keep both clipboards, operating system clipboard as well as Vim clipboard in sync.
And after saving the changes and sourcing this configuration file again, if we'll try to copy something by using command C and then paste it by using key P, we'll see that the content that was copied into clipboard of operating system has been pasted. And vice versa, if we'll try to yank something by using Vim key Y and then paste it by using command V, we'll get the text that we have just yanked by using Vim key. And this is all about syncing clipboards. Let's move on to another thing. In Vim we can easily jump between opening and closing braces. It also works for square brackets, parentheses and so on. But if we'll try to do the same with angle brackets, let's try to press percent sign to jump to the closing bracket. We can see it doesn't work for angle brackets. And thankfully we can easily make it work. It's just a matter of adding another setting in here. And the setting is called match pairs. So let's assign the following value. Source this configuration file again. And try to jump between angle brackets this time by pressing percent sign. Actually, sometimes sourcing configuration file is not enough and we have to fully restart an ID. So I'm gonna restart it right now. And let's try it out again. And there we go, when I'm pressing percent sign, we are jumping between opening and closing angle brackets. There is also a default keyboard shortcut in Vim that allows us to join lines together and that is Shift J. But idea Vim plugin improves this behavior and allows us to join lines in a smart way. So that means that while joining lines, it will take under consideration surrounding context. So for example, if we'll now to try to join these two comments together by pressing Shift J, we'll basically get two lines joined together, but comments themselves have not been merged into one. But let's see what will happen if we'll now enable the smart joining functionality. So let's add the following option, idea join in our configuration file. Let's source it. And the difference will be that after joining these two comments, we'll end up with only one comment. So those two slashes have been removed. And that works not only for comments, if we'll open up documentation page that is dedicated to this smart joining functionality, we can see that we can easily join two strings into one, several conditional statements into one, and there are a couple more constructs that this smart joining functionality works with. Unfortunately, when I was trying it out in PHP Storm, it only worked with comments, but when I have tried it in IntelliJ IDEA, all these examples seem to be working. So that's about it for this lesson, let's continue working on the configuration file in the next one. Link to the repository with this configuration file will be in the video description.